Mm. Good question. Let me answer that for you. Here we go. Okay, have you heard of the leapfrog, like uh, digital go. leapfrog? So let me explain what this is. So the United States, well, if you go back to the Industrial Revolution, each country industrialized at different rates. That's right. So Europe industrialized first, added machines, mm -hmm. right, in the late 1700s. Mm -hmm. And then the next country, the next country, the next country. Each country that industrialized after, it happened faster. That's right. Because they were able to build off of the lessons of the previous Listen. countries. So the first country takes 100 years, the last country takes five years, right? That's how it happens. But also because of the leapfrog. And so like in the United States, for example, we had wireless phones. It took about 80 years to reach 80% adoption in, wireless, in, in, in wired phone lines. We had phone lines all over the United States. So when the internet came, the internet grew very rapidly mm -hmm. in the United mm -hmm. States because we had wired phone lines. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're old enough to remember, the early days of getting on the internet, it was through, a, through your phone, right? Remember the, remember the noise that I made? But in Africa, Watch. they didn't have the whole country wired. Watch phones. what happened in Africa. So they, they couldn't have internet yeah. because they didn't have the, the phone lines That's anywhere. Right. So right. what they did is when the U.S. got wireless, yes. Africa just leapfrogged, leapfrogged past the whole yep. wired thing Showed and in. went directly to wireless, wireless internet. Watch this. That's what we're talking about with the leapfrog. It was a wireless <laughs> moment, and that's exactly where we are in the monetary system. Yes. So remember, the bonds and the, the correspondent banks and the SWIFT system and all of that, that's the wired phone system. But what if we just leapfrogged right past that with a new system? And that's what we have. It's called Project Embridge. This is brought by the BIS. Now, I've drawn this before. If we have all the central banks. Again, you said BIS. What does what what it stand for for those who just came in? BIS stands for Bank for International Settlements. It is the most, it is the bank for the central banks. The most powerful banking system in the world. Here we go. Let's keep going, y'all. Man. Banks, the U.S. Central Bank, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of China, etc. Up here, we kind of have the IMF. I know them. And then up here, we have the BIS. BIS. Okay. Here they go. So the BIS and China have just created something <laughs> called Project Embridge, which is the leapfrog. Wow. Wow. But let's jump right to the BIS website and take a look at this. So this is a screenshot directly from the uh, BIS website, Project Embridge, connecting economies through a CBDC. Uh -oh. Yes, that's a central bank digital currency. Yes, yes the thing that you fear the most, <laughs> it's here. The central bank it digital currency. Here. What we have, let's pull up a little bit of text directly off of the BIS website, mm -hmm. directly in their own words. It says right here that payment systems underpinning cross-border financial flows has not kept pace with rapid growth. Okay. So the payment systems underpinning cross-border flows, what is that? That would be the existing system, the yes. SWIFT payment system, uh -oh. the correspondent banks, uh -oh. the thing that's keeping the U.S. dollar entrenched per the dollar bulls, uh -oh. that system, it doesn't keep up, hasn't uh -oh. kept pace with rapid growth. The global network of correspondent banks, there's that word, yes. that facilitates international payments is hindered yes. by high cost, low mm. speed, and transparency, and operational complexities. Mm. It's way too complex. Yes. And it's way too risky because, yes. you know, the U.S. could just yep. censor us, yes, <laughs> shut us off, sanction us at any time. <laughs> yes, Emerging market and developing economies need affordable access to the global financial oh. system. They can't afford to pay these abs yeah. these crazy fees to this yeah. old antiquated system of the correspondent banks and the SWIFT oh. system. Can't afford to do that anymore. We need complex. something better. So now we need multiple CBDCs, multiple. multi central bank digital multiple. currencies, arrangements that directly connect, connect. with each other, oh. offering significant potential to improve okay. the current system. Okay. Creative destruction. When a new way is created, it kills the old oh. way. The BIS, <laughs> Bank of International Settlements, Innovation Hub, Hong oh. Kong Center, so Hong Kong is the financial center of Asia yes. and kind of the world, which is yeah. of course owned and controlled by China. Yeah, yeah. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Oh, man, did they go again? Uh, other Asian banks as well. Oh, yeah, and of course the People's Bank of China, oh, PBOC. Okay. The Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates, what? UAE. Of course, <laughs> the energy hub of the world. Yeah. Um, are working together to build such a multi CBDC platform known as Project M. Oh man, yeah. they have it it's directly. They are strictly, they trying to sidestep the whole SWIFT system. Man, let's give you 1,000. You are concerned about what's going on with this economy. I know I would be, man. You have the stock market not doing too well. You have inflation outpacing wages right now. 
and you have major companies looking at laying off a lot of people. Man, I had a friend of mine whose wife works for a major pharmaceutical company, and they're talking about laying off scientists, man, scientists. It's getting real out there, guys. But hold on, wait a minute. It's not the end of the world for those that actually have a counter move. More than ever, it's time for everyday Americans to begin looking at a side hustle. A business for them to begin building now and for them to be able to have the ability to pass that business on to second and third generation. Now, what business model is best for you? That's a good question, and the only person that can answer that question is you. The good news is a good friend of mine, Matt Zappala, actually did a good presentation on presenting the passive income blueprint. Three effective ways to generate $1.5 million in passive income. The most powerful word in business is cash flow. And even a more, more powerful word is passive cash flow. I know because I've been able to live the life of my dreams because of passive income. Most individuals focus on commission based, generating commission. What if you can actually generate $1.5 million in, in passive income that can change not only your life, but generations to come, guys. Click on the link below or swipe up, guys, and I think you'll be blessed with what you see. God bless you. See you on this side. The whole system, because in the, in what they said, it's too complex. It's too risky because the U.S. could just say, oh, we're going to cut you off. Now, we need to have multiple uh, 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 central digital uh, 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 currencies, right? We need to have that multiple uh, uh, of those platforms in a link into one to sidestep the SWIFT, the SWIFT system. This Bricks thing is real, y'all. Here we go. ...off of their website. So what this is, is just like how Africa was able to jump into wireless internet without having to build the wires first yeah. like the U.S. did, yeah. well, China is now bypassing the entire financial system, not wow. by trying to rebuild or duplicate the old archaic system that doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. No, they're building a brand new system to bypass or leapfrog over it, wow. and that is the... Embridge. It's a cross bridge CBDC platform that does three purposes that align perfectly with China's mission and vision. So what are those? First, to block. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it prevents them from being blocked by U.S. sanctions and surveillance. So now they can. Move. Wait a minute. That's a threat right there to the U.S. to the U.S. dollar. Right. And the sanctions. Here we go. Move money around without the U.S. seeing what they're doing or having the ability to sanction them mm. like what happened to Russia. Mm. It builds it builds non-USD rails. No. So the rails is the way the money moves. So now they can move it in a whole new system without having to use the U.S. dollar. Wow. And they can do that with their key partners. Partners. Okay. Key partners like UAE Come on. for energy. Yeah. Yes, key yeah. partners. Bricks. It yeah. expands their offshore liquidity for their own currency, wow. and it builds massive influence for their geoeconomic sphere, for the countries that they want to do business with. They have massive influence now because they're expanding their liquidity into this wow. new system. Look, so wow. it kind of looks something like this, look, look what it looks like, yeah. where each country like has their, this is, here's Thailand, yeah. or here's uh, uh, China, Hong Kong, et cetera, UAE, and their banks work through, and they all look come in this. here, and then they swap and they look go back out, it's the bridge. This is the look hub look where they do the this. exchange. Ooh. And we can see, here's like another, these are screenshots mm -hmm. directly off the BIS website. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of see um, all the, all the um, commercial banks look send it to the central bank, oh. and then the central banks can exchange amongst themselves oh. and then push it right back out to look the commercial look banks. Look and then of course you and I, we'd be all the way out here. So would. Now, this is something that's been underworked for a while. Uh, we can see the timeline here started back in 2000. Quick question, that, that, that right there, guys, that, 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 that completely uh, kind of usurps the dollar. Here's the question. Have they tested this out? Let's find out and see. 17, it's been advancing all the way till 2022, where it was successfully what? conducted using real value transaction. Wow. Meaning, this is no more in theory mm -mm. or in design. It's actually out. It's been tested. It's been proven. Wow. And it works. So, wow. It's time to face the uncomfortable reality. Listen. The uncomfortable reality is that the world is changing. It is. What we know as money is changing. Mm -hmm. And the world of uh, control and money of the U.S. dollar is also changing. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's not 
going to happen sometime in the future, it's here right now. Yeah. If you're looking at the world from a geo-economic, a geopolitical lens, yeah. if you're looking at the, the world as a game board, you want to understand who the players are and yes. what their moves are. Yes. And yes. anybody that looks at that has to recognize that this is under underway. It is. The users of this, I do want to say the use of this as of right now, it's not the time to go be scared and hide them in your house. Of course. The use of this right now are central banks, commercial banks, as I just drew out, and even state banks. Yes. It's not designed yet for a retail CBDC. Not yet. Mm. Phase one, let's get it working between the banks. Uh, Phase two. two, we can try to put out to the individual people. Mm. But this is coming, the dollar's days are coming to an end. Now, yes. when I say coming into an end, like I said, the dollar took over from the pound sterling 100 years ago. It's still the third most used currency today. Some people are gonna watch this and go, oh my gosh, Mark, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna wake up one day and my dollars will buy me half as many goods and services? They already do. Yes, they The dollar do. already buys you half as much that as it did a few years ago. And so yes, that will continue. The dollar will continue to lose its dominance. One of the big things is that as the dollar loses its dominance, then the inflation that the U.S. is able to ship off to the rest of the world mm -hmm. will come home to roost. So we expect a lot more inflation uh, from us as it sets in. Long live the king.